We don't know what's going to happen with his court case yet. But the Secret Service are laying down plans to actually prepare in the event he is put in jail. I didn't know this, but from listening to Tim Pool, Secret Service have the power to basically take over any building in protection of, of the president or the presidential candidates. Um, they could totally clear out the entire prison if they wanted and um, and take over that entire prison while Trump's serving his, um, his, his term in there. So they've been making plans, uh, the chief of Secret Service, to actually prepare in the event of that happening. Um, this is in relation to the case involving him and the falsification of business records. The judge has not been very warm to Trump at all. And um, whilst normally they wouldn't send, this wouldn't carry a prison sentence, um, we could see a situation where um, it's been adjusted slightly so that this um, judge, Judge Juan uh, Merkin, can actually, I think he's the one that was smiling in court, could actually sentence him on July 11th. And I think that's goes going back to what Charlie said crap's about to go down i mean it was only about two weeks ago four years ago that we saw a situation where the whole uh, george floyd riot started and america burnt and billions of dollars of damage took place we could see a situation very soon where think we are an election year guys this is why we got banned last week on on youtube and um a, a few bands on um t on, t on tiktok it seems that every time America has an election, the world has to suffer as a result. And we're seeing a situation where um, America is actually going to... Um, the, the elite, they're, they're worried Trump's going to win. It's seriously bad. I've got an idea. Yeah. And that idea is this. Put some bars on some windows around Mar-a-Lago. He'll be sweet because at the end of the day, he's got everything he wants there. It's a resort. <laughs> yeah. Because if they take over that building, it's just going to be... Uh, you know, exactly yeah. what you said. It's just going well, to no, no, You're right. Normally, normally with this particular um, law that was broken, it would be uh, at home, you know, uh, what well, do we at worst, call it? Uh, home detention. Home detention. But because of the criminality of the way they've adjusted to approach, this is not a typical trial, guys. And if you're not paying attention, you've definitely got to watch this interview between Donald Trump and Dr. Phil. They've bastardized this case. They've bastardized the, the law. The judge is clearly against him. This area where the jury is from, they vote 90% Democrat, 10% Republican. That's the pool of people. And he lost his appeal. He lost his appeal because mm. he, he appealed to be able to speak because they're, they're silencing a, a former president mm. of the United States of America. I mean, that, that, that is unheard of. I don't, I don't know if that's ever happened before. Mm. Chris might be able mm. to tell us. Well, <laughs> I've just thrown you under the bus. <laughs> to, to, to a degree, Richard Nixon's probably the best example, which I can get in, in terms of limiting his, his access to it. But uh, e even Nixon was immediately pardoned by some of his own, own party, I might highlight. But I also think that if it wasn't, if LBJ was in a position, would have also pardoned him. I don't think we're at that now. A lot's made of partisan issues such as tax policy and what have you. Taxes, you can move around, you can move up and down, you can change. These are kind of the issues that are very hard to move on and heal. If, if Wholesale sales tax. Remember how big a deal that was at the 2000 election? How it's going to bring in the never GST, this, that, or whatever. Even the carbon tax. Are big, yeah, these, these are issues that you can put in a carbon tax. You can roll back a carbon tax. You can move these things around. These are wounds that the last generations. Mm. I but, don't know. Sorry. I don't know yeah. how that works when, when we had... Uh, Joe Biden, I think, was it in Ukraine where, where he said, you know, he's talking, well, hell, if you don't do this, you know, you're not getting your one billion or, you know, you, you're not getting your mm. aid. So h how is that in, in this? Not corrupt. In, in yeah. Yeah. So what, what he did was he <laughs> used his position as vice president. He said, if you don't fire this corrupt prosecutor, this Ukrainian prosecutor that's investigating my Burisma, yeah. which my son is on the board of yes. and was giving money on the side to... Uh, uh, Joe Biden, the big guy, and everyone else, 10% for the big guy. Um, if you don't fire him, you're not getting the billion dollars. You're not allowed to use taxpayer funding. You're not allowed to use your position to leverage and threaten other people so you can financially benefit yourself. But he did that. It was caught on camera, and nothing's happened. Just like nothing happened from Hunter Biden's uh, laptop. Mm. Absolutely he, nothing. Interestingly, the on that point, the U.S. has a law, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Mm. You influence another public official, which he's, he's, he's done it openly in the media. He's actually yeah. bragging about the way he does it, and he's done it. Mm. 
why is that not a breach of the foreign corrupt practices and the extent to which it, we're talking we're, we're talking taxpayer dollars here mm. okay remember the government doesn't own any money it's mm. taxpayer money and the government holds those funds on trust for the taxpayer saying okay we're looking at investing in x we use taxpayer money to do this he's using taxpayer money to influence another public official a direct violation don't Where let a good law get in the way of a corrupt politician, mm, right? It's only a rod if you're not involved. Yeah, exactly. Literally. It's selective <laughs> enforcement. It makes me sick, honestly. It makes me sick. That's right. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, look, I, um, 